this is Henry Ford Health System News, and I'm Dana J. We always bring you great stories about how our team members are making a difference in the lives of our patients, our community, and each other. But this time, we start on a particularly high note. Star Spangled Banner, yet The national anthem is tricky for even the most seasoned singer. But it's just the right challenge for the Henry Ford Motor City Upbeats. Also, it's a song that most people know the words to, so asking them to consciously, intentionally use the words um, that can really enhance and start to fire up different areas of the brain as well. The Motor City Upbeats is a therapeutic vocal choir. Director Liz Escada says the goal isn't to make the members good singers, it's to make sure that singing is doing the members good. Really, we're trying to just support these um, patients and members of the community who are struggling with their voices for various different reasons. The choir is the brainchild of Dr. Alice Silbergleit, amateur singer and full-time director of Henry Ford's Speech and Language Sciences Disorders Division in the Department of Neurology. She noticed a trend among her patients. So frequently, they would finish therapy, and I would see them a month later, and they would have regressed a little bit because they had not had the opportunity to use their voice. She prescribed choir practice because singing and warm-up exercises incorporate a range of movements and breathing techniques. Singing is an aerobic activity, and so if we combine moving our fingers and our hands with our mouths, we are challenging people's brains, and we're keeping them motivated, and we're building con neurological connections that they might not have had before by just sitting there. Cynthia Klein has been with the Upbeats from the beginning. It helps me because she's came over from my uh, the PT has been teaching me. Before the pandemic, the choir performed around town. They carried their tunes through lockdown, rehearsing online, attracting members from all over Michigan. Rehearsals for their performance of the Star Spangled Banner have them back together and hoping others will join them. Liz gets us, um, like, like spunky and and like you know like we get into it and you know makes it a lot of fun. I would just love to share the experience with as many people as possible. The folks in the choir say the most important thing to remember is you don't have to be a good singer to join the Motor City Upbeats. It's open to patients, caregivers, family, friends, and the community. And now let's take a minute to recognize the efforts of folks from across Henry Ford who have been working so hard to get our team members and the community vaccinated against COVID-19. It's been about six months since Henry Ford received the first doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Since then, our team members have been busy inoculating employees at employee health clinics, patients at Henry Ford vaccine clinics, and community members at dozens of remote locations in Metro Detroit and the Jackson area. As of June 18th, our team had administered more than 324,400 doses at more than 97 vaccination sites. Wow. Now, another story behind one of the works of art that are part of the Healing Arts Program at the Brigitte Harris Cancer Pavilion in Detroit. Joanna Kerwood says she sculpts with resin. In this piece, she layers meaningful artifacts representing our patients and our benefactors into that resin. I called it Rust to Roses, Brigetta and Mort's story. He starts off talking about uh, how he was introduced to Henry Ford Hospital by jumping off a roof onto a rusty nail. And then obviously with Brigetta and her roses, and I thought, rusty nails and roses, how, how did they fit together? Before I started the project, they gave me the leaves. You know, I really wanted to make sure that the survivors were shown. I wanted them to like be included within it. I had a lot of conversations with my dad when he was sick um, with cancer. He said, I feel like I'm drowning in this 
turning, revolving vortex being sucked in. So I really wanted to incorporate that feeling, but I also wanted it to be as a survivor would feel like once they've been through this treatment, that the world is still there and that the, through the tunnel is, is the most amazing life that you've still got to lead. Henry Ford is so forward thinking with their cancer research. They're doing work that corresponds with the person who's got the cancer. It's not, you're just, not just a name. You're not just a name on a leaf. If it was 2004, you know, my dad might still be here, right? He might have a leaf of his own in my painting, you know? You know, I, have a, I spend a lot of time on my own painting out here and I talk to my dad all the time and he was right here with me with his painting. I felt every one of those survivors and what they've been through and I get it. I really hope that they feel hope when, when they see it. You want to be sucked in because there's so many tiny minuscule details in it so I want them to get lost in it. You know, it reminds me of when you hold a marble up to the light when you're a child and everything dances around and it just brings on is playful. That is going to give them some escape and with it some inspiration and hope and I, you know, I love that. <laughs> You'll find that meaningful piece of art in the multi-purpose room on the first floor at the Cancer Pavilion. All right, let's send you off with the featured photo. Here's the team from Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital that rocked the block with Habitat for Humanity in Pontiac. The crew worked in three homes, spiffing up the exteriors with some landscaping, painting, and porch repairs. We know you and your team are hard at work on all kinds of things, so tell us what you're up to. Send us your story ideas or photos to newstips at hfhs.org. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.